and one of the hardest hit areas already is Saltville. Corrine Zell is there live. How's it look? Stephen Carroll, you can see flooding is still an issue here. This playground at Grady Park is partially underwater. Another community left cleaning up tonight is Port Washington. Residents at this Port Washington condo building watched from their balconies as water covered cars overnight. John Folks knew there was nothing he could do. I think the worst part is look out and see my car taking a swim. So how did you find out your car was covered uh, with water? 3.30 this morning, my phone rang. See if you can move your car. I look out the window, it was already too late. John says the water rose to the roof of his car. It shot, you know, kind of gets you right in the gut. In 2008, he says he lost another car here to flooding. Ted Mitringa was getting ready for work when he saw the mess. I turned around and I looked back out the window and realized there was water in the parking lot. It was seeping into his car. Luckily, I left it out but there's about 25 or 30 other cars in there that aren't so lucky. Neighbors also use the garage for storage. This is the door from the inside. I lost all my Christmas things from all my children over the years and probably every tool I owned. Residents aren't sure when they'll be able to get inside. I'm, I'm hoping they're floating, but I'm not looking forward to it. I don't think it's they are. Back here in Sockville, they're also dealing with a mess. We stumbled upon a good Samaritan who took off work to help people out today. We'll have his story coming up tonight on the News at 6. For now, we're live in Sockville. Corrine Zell, today's TMJ4. Corrine, thank you very much.